Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about pre-made or pre-cast footing blocks. So if you learn a little something about this video or you like what you see, or maybe you didn't know about these before, or maybe you're new to the industry and you wanna know a little bit more about how to create a foundation for your deck, don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that bell icon to be notified when we are putting out new content. All right, so what we have here are two different types of pre-made concrete footing blocks. But before I get into that, let me tell you a little bit about what they are and why we may use them over traditional or more advanced footing styles. So there's a few different types of footings that we use when we build decks. Usually back in the day, we used to hand dig and pour all of our own concrete footings. That was a great way to go. Sometimes they were cylindrical and they went deeper. Sometimes they were more square and they didn't go as deep. And sometimes we had to add rebar into those as well. Just depends on the engineering of the deck and how much weight you want to suspend off the base of the footings. So that is a thing. And it's all calculated in math, which usually I'm not qualified to do. So I usually have a structural engineer involved when I'm trying to calculate out what size footings do I need for a particular size deck. The bigger the deck, the more projection, depending on the tributary loads of the deck, will determine the size of your footings. If you don't understand those terms, then you probably shouldn't be calculating out your own footing sizes, either get educated on it, or contact somebody that can help you, not me, but like a structural engineer that usually gets paid for their time. They went to college and learned how to calculate this stuff, so they do deserve to be paid for that. Okay, so with that being said, a lot of times you might be a weekend warrior. You just wanna build a 12 foot by 12 foot deck and you don't wanna pour concrete. You can obtain these type of footing blocks. This is your standard footing block right here. It has about a 12 inch by 12 inch footprint, which usually isn't adequate for anything except for the smallest of projects. It might be good for a landing or the bottom of a staircase or something like that, but it's really not gonna work too well for a large deck. So I never use these. The only time I've used these in the past was when I was trying to add extra support on a deck in between regular footing sizes and I needed, I had too much flex in a beam or something like that. I ran to Home Depot, picked up one of these. This is an adjustable saddle made by Simpson. This is what goes, there's a hole inside of each of these blocks, regardless of what size or what type it is. There's a hole right here that will accept this saddle. Now this saddle is a uh, hot dip galvanized and the model number is EPB44PHDG. I bought this at Home Depot. They're like $20. Uh, the concrete blocks are like six or eight bucks. Like I said, I don't use these too much because they don't hold a lot of weight. Now, depending on where you live, you may not be allowed to use these anyways. Like up north and east, they don't use footing blocks because the ground heave is too much. The ground freezes, it raises up, it lifts the footing out of place. The whole deck's out of whack. It's not a good way to go there. You gotta go four feet deep in the ground. Where I live in the Pacific Northwest, we don't have uh, frost heave. Don't shoot the messenger, man. It is what it is. We only have to dig down 12 inches and have a footprint for our footing, okay? But a 12 by 12 inch footprint isn't enough to sustain the weight. That is why I use these a lot. Now these particular footing blocks are round. They're 18 inches round though, okay? So they're a much larger footprint. They hold a lot more weight than a standard 12 inch by 12 inch will. They also have a little bit of an oversized hole compared to the hole on this footing block. I don't make them, I just take them. This saddle, by the way, is adjustable. You see the nut right here? You can spin this up and down and raise it and lower it to get your elevation height. If you want to, before you finish building your deck, you can also epoxy these in so you don't get any uplift if that's a concern in your area. If you have high winds or your engineer's concerned for uplift or that kind of thing, you can actually epoxy this in place before you go any further. But you can, it's nice to be able to raise and lower these to the elevation you need as you're building a deck. Usually what we do, if we're building a deck that's really low to the ground and we're not concerned about any uplift from wind or high winds, we'll install this. And sometimes I'll, I'll make it so that my beam, the bottom of my beam sits right in this saddle. And then I can raise and lower this with a crescent wrench and get the elevation I need. Sometimes that works, sometimes not so much. You might have to put a block of wood, a four by four or a four by six 
up to where your beam is. Just depends on how you're building your deck. That's not what this video is about though. It's about the actual footing block. Now, I've been told that this particular block is only available in Washington State. That's because a company called Basalite makes these. They're local to our local region, and they probably make them for this region only because they know that we don't have frost heave here. I'm sure you can find them maybe in California. Certain lumber yards may carry this brand or this product, but you know, to transport concrete is kind of spendy. So I don't know if that translates into a higher footing price for you. I think these are around $17 a piece. And then this top is, like I said, 20. So the tops actually cost more than the base, but you know, you're about 40 bucks a footing by the time you're done with this particular type. But I use these all the time if I need to do a low deck, if something's low to the ground, it's not over 30 inches, maybe we don't need a building permit for it. And I don't, I, or if I don't have a way to get my machine into the backyard for driving helical piles, I'll use these instead. This is my go-to. You can see it's a little bit shallower than this. Depth doesn't matter so much where I come from. It's footprint that matters, the size of the footprint. So if you have an 18 inch by 18 inch footprint, that's gonna hold a lot more weight than a 12 inch by 12 inch footprint will. And I think it's more than double. Uh, it's weird how math works like that, but I think it's more than double what this is. I just wanted to explain that to you on a video because I get this question quite often as I'm building, maybe on different social media channels, but now I can direct people to this page and this video to check it out and why we use these particularly over this type of footing. So if you like what you saw today, guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. Don't forget to like this video, leave me a comment below. I know a lot of you don't ever use footing blocks. I rarely use them as well, but I think they do have a place in building decks and in our society. So for that reason, that's why I'm sharing this with you today. Thanks for watching, have a great day.